Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is December 14th, 2020, and we have a, a few kits that have come in overseas. You know, it's always sort of a quiet week, that middle week of a month. Also do have one domestic release, and we have, more importantly, shall I say, the February announcements from Hasegawa. So, there are a few things on this list I'm happy to see. So... I will share them with you. Uh, we got a reissue of the Lancia Stratus HF Stradale, which is the street version, basically, of their rally kit. Uh, it's pretty much the only Stratus in, you know, street car in town. Uh, there is a Fujimi version that uses uh, the engine and a few other pieces uh, from the Enthusiast series. Uh, for Idino, because the, the engine is pretty much the same thing, and then had the Stratos body tooled up for it, but that has been out of production for quite a while. Uh, they're kind of hard to get a hold of, and uh, this is a curbside, but, you know, if you're just looking to replicate the streetcar, that is a fine option, if you will. Uh, reissue of the uh, Charge-sponsored Mazda 767B from the 1989 Le Mans, 24 hours of Le Mans, finished second place in class. Uh, reissue of the Shell uh, livery 962C from the 1987 Norris Ring, a uh, uh, round of the World Sports Car Prototype Series, which are finished second. And then we go into the uh, you know, modified uh, stuff here, so to speak. So first up, you have a reissue of the 1993 uh, Toyota Celica Turbo four-wheel drive rally car, and that's going to be for the 1993 Swedish Rally, and that is the winning car. It's a privateer team. And then a reissue of their Lancia 037 uh, Rally car, which will be for the 1985 European Rally Championship Catalonia uh, Rally, and that is also the winning car. Uh, there is a note in the production notes saying that the wheels do not match the car. Uh, they finally released box art the other day, and it seems like the rear wheels are the sort of odd... Um, 18 inch because that's what they ran back then um, like steel wheel uh, they definitely don't match the actual wheels that come with the kit the front wheels are the wheels that come with the kit the back wheels are not and I don't necessarily believe there's anything in resin that replicates these wheels so that's sort of a, like a dia care kind of thing uh, if you're going to go ahead and build that out and then we're also going to get a reissue of their uh, Subaru Impreza from the 1997 Rally Portugal. Uh, it's a sixth place finishing car, and they're including a resin spoiler in this kit uh, to make that match the actual car. So it is nice to see them, uh, I guess, in places where they feel it's applicable anyway, that they're, they're doing some resin work to sort of convert, if you will, the car into the next thing. Uh, it is a Japanese driver in that car. It's a privateer team, because by... 1997, uh, the 1994 Impreza, which is what this is, uh, was long gone <laughs> as far as being the frontline WRC car for Subaru. Obviously, they had at that point had the the next gen, uh, the next gen, well, the next generation as far as that goes, uh, Impreza, and this is a older one. It's a 1997 Rally Portugal, but it is the uh, same kit that the I'm trying to think. Let's see what is. What has it been released as uh, recently? The same as the uh, Impreza that was in the 94 uh, Royal Auto Club 95 Monte Carlo Rally winning boxing. So it's that older car, but in a in a, in a rally where it should have been in the next, uh, in the next Impreza uh, generation. But it is not, so it's kind of cool. And then we're going to get a reissue of the Datsun Fairlady 240Z uh, with a resin chin spoiler, because you know, that's what we're doing at Hasegawa these days. Uh, it's also going to have the wheels out of the Z432R, which is, of course, the uh, street version that was uh, modulated to be the car that ran in rallies. It's the, basically the, the production version of the car that won the Safari Rally. And uh, there was a... Uh, interesting sort of mix and match of wheels there. And then we get a reissue of the Datsun Sunny, uh, the little pickup truck, and it's going to be a Nissan service vehicle. So it's got the, the uh, I don't know if they're going to be decals or they're going to make you paint the tritone, but it's a, a red roof, white body, and then like a blue stripe at the bottom, and then it's got a bunch of Nissan uh, service logos for the decal sheet. And then they're going to reissue their Toyota Corolla 11 AE92. This is going to be a heavily modified version to do the late version 
uh, GTZ version. Uh, this is the car that had an inter the intercooler, uh, the turbo, and you're going to get a new hood, new front bumper, new rear bumper. There's a new steering wheel. Uh, there's new wheels, there's a, uh, and all of the associated parts that go with the new bumpers and, and things like that. The new uh, headlights, taillights, and all that sort of thing. So we're seeing the next version of that. And then, uh, most significantly to me, because A, I said this was coming, and B, I really, really want this, is a Toyota Supra Group A 1988 Intertech Japanese Touring Car Championship version of their Neutral Supra. So we told you there was a racing version of this coming. Always suspected it because why in the world are you making a streetcar version of that if you're not also going to have a race car version of it? And this will be uh, the Minolta livery, which of course is probably the more famous uh, Japanese versions of this uh, race car version of the Supra. Uh, there is a uh, Bio version, which or Bio, however you pronounce that company name. That the car is very, very dark blue, and then the car did run several years uh, in European touring, which includes the 24 Hours of Spa in back in the 1980s. And the one thing uh, I've seen a lot of people like, oh yeah, race car, cool. Now we'll get the 24 Hours of Spa cars. The thing with those cars would be is they are. Toyota of Belgium prepped, which is the same people that did their rally cars in the 1980s. There is rally versions of the Super, by the way. Uh, KMP out of Italy just did a whole transkit to turn the Tamiya Supra into a Safari rally, which is very, very intensive resin transkit conversion. But at any rate, uh, the same same basic place, to, you know, converted their touring versions, and so the, all of the 24 hours of Spa and all of the European touring cars are left-hand drive. And obviously this kit, as it stands right now, is only a right-hand drive kit. So I would not be totally surprised that at some point, the, maybe the next civilian reissue, modified, whatever they're going to do with it, or somewhere down the line, there is a left-hand drive included because it seems kind of silly to tool up a kit uh, that was clearly a very popular car in the United States and and not do a left-hand drive for it. Um, you know, we'll wait to see what that what the kit looks like when it's tooled when when you have it in hand to see if like oh hey you know you can see uh, when you flip the body over there are pre drilled holes for the left hand drive wipers or you can tell by the way the the, the interior is tooled up that there is a left hand drive version of it coming uh, I would be very very shocked especially with them putting uh, you know a couple grand into the 240Z kit to turn it into a left hand drive car that they don't do a civilian left hand drive kit at some point just almost specifically aimed at the US market and if they tool the dashboard up the same way and which nobody's really seen yet unless you look at a lot of the of the uh, prototype or the the test shots the dashboard is tooled up in such a way that the radio and the heater controls and all that stuff are separate from the actual dashboard what that allowed them to do in the making this race car kit of course is now they don't have to make a second dashboard that's gutted out for the racing versions you're building the streetcar version is you glue the radio you glue the radio in and you glue all the, the ventilation controls in and you're on your way if you're building the race car version you you glue the sheet metal blanks that went over all that stuff because clearly you're not running HVAC in a race car uh, and you have a race car version of it. It's a very cool little bit of, a, of forethought in the engineering uh, to make it not, you know, hey, we tool it this way and you know these couple of parts change what the whole basis of the kit is without us having to tool up an entirely separate dashboard for it. So if they tool up the right-hand drive dashboard, or left-hand drive dashboard rather, the same way, then you could have the spa uh, race car, or at least in the theory, you could have somebody make the decals for it, and you could buy the left-hand drive street kit and the right-hand drive, you know, race car kit, and combine them and, and, and go from there. But I'm thinking, yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll see what they do with those. You know, there's always four or five uh, kits in a Hasegawa new tool, and that Supra, of course, is a brand new tool. So. We'll see how well that all works out in the end. Let's go to kit releases as we uh, have, again, just a few things here. On the domestic side of things, we didn't get this release this week. The Diamonds Are Forever 007 1971 Ford Mustang Mach 1. So, round two has tooled up uh, a new sort of 
front radiator shroud and a new uh, small front bumper and a new radiator. Uh, it's or not new radiator, but a new grill, which kind of backdates this kit a little bit better, if you will, into a 1971. Uh, Mustang. Now remember, this is an annual kit. It was a 71 Mustang, then it was a 72, then it was a 73, and then they backed it into a 71, and it's got this amalgamation of parts where it's not really any particular year, and it's always been kind of cruddy for that. And that's probably why, you know, in reality, uh, around, uh, that Ravel is going to do, you know, the, a whole new tool version of this, uh, of the 71 to 73 Mustangs at some point in 2021. But it makes it a little bit better. Still got the wrong hood. Still got the engine based on the wrong engine. Uh, it does have new wheels uh, tooled up to match the movie car wheels. Um, I've seen some people complaining about the fact that they the decals in it. Well, it has the decals specifically to match the movie car, and that's it. There's no custom decals included in here. So, um, you know, I, I guess you guys have no parts decals at all. You have no, you've not saved a single decal sheet in your entire lives. So that if you wanted to put other decals on this, you could. Keith Marks obviously offers decals for this kit as well. Um, but otherwise, I mean, it is what it is. The thing is, what, almost 50 years old at this point. And, uh, yeah, it's a round two, round two reissue of an old tool. So, uh, it's, it's the only representation of a 71 Mustang, really, because, of course, this is the MPC tooling, by the way. It's an AMT box. AMT tooling, of course, is the Warren Tope race car. But until Ravel comes out with the, you know, brand new tool, this these old kits are the only way you build this Mustang. So you take your lumps, I guess, with that. And then uh, one kit in Germany. We're going to mention this only in passing because it is slightly different this time around, and that's this. It is a BMW i8. Now, this kit was tooled up back in 2015. Um, it's one of those weird Revell tools, um, and it's just a weird thing in general. Uh, I, was having, I was just having this discussion with somebody the other day about the McLaren Senna kit that is coming up, where there are actually two engines, if you will, in this kit. There's the front electric motor, and it's just a blob, but it's there. And then you build the uh, petrol engine in the rear, and then you put stuff all over it, and you never see any of it again. You literally cannot access the engine once the kit is built because you put a luggage compartment over top of the engine, which is what how the real car is, and it doesn't come back out. It's part of the <laughs> it's part of the car at that point, and so all that engine you put in there disappears because this car being an electric vehicle or a hybrid vehicle is very it's just got you know it's a, to uh, pardon my french piss on a plate flat uh chassis plate underneath of it and so you never see any of it again so that's one of those like and, and this kid has a couple of little weird weird oddities to it where you wonder to yourself like hey, if they spent that money they put into this engine that you never see again could they have fixed these problems with it and and that's where I am with a McLaren Senna. Like, McLaren Senna gets a huge, like, I don't know, 12, 14 piece engine. And once you build the McLaren Senna kit together, you can't get the engine. You, you, I mean, you probably could build it in some way where you could take the body apart. But building it as per the instructions to get the finished product, you don't see, ever see the engine again. So and we went over this when, uh, when the Senna was announced. It's a weird choice of tooling dollars because that McLaren Senna better be an awesome kit with no fit issues and no uh, problems. Otherwise, no decals for, for metal great things that they did with the Acura NSX and that uh, Aoshima did with the original Venador because don't... You know, don't be putting something I don't need into a kit and then being like, ah, oh, we ran out of money. Anyway, this i8 has new wheels. Uh, it has the torque, uh, torque, I almost said torque thrust, but that's a specific wheel. It has sort of the torque twist wheels, which were an optional wheel for the BMW i8 back when it came out in 2015. And so the kit itself, otherwise completely the same, just new wheels added to it. So... I think anybody who wanted the Torque Twist wheels probably bought them off of Playmos when Playmos was still a thing. Um, in resin, I know I have a set that for that, and yeah, but I mean, it is what it is, and it's back out uh, for anyone who's interested in that. Um, so, over to Japan. We have one thing from Hasegawa, and these are not technically resin girls. These are actually injected molded girls, and they are the number nine set of the figure collection, the Paddock Girls. Uh, so these uh, young ladies appear to be Super GT uh, paddock girls from the, I'd say currently, or maybe about five years ago or so. 
Uh, the cars in the background are clearly Hasegawa's depiction of the the basic current uh, GTR, Super GT500 cars. Uh, because there's the blue one, and then in the background there's the red one, and that's how they are in real life. The blue one would be the Calsonic car, and the red one's the, the uh, Ixnavi car. And all of the sponsorship on this box art is, is fake, and they're Hasegawa Racing Team, and it's very cool to sort of see that box art because it's, it's, it's a twist on reality, and I appreciate the, the amount of work that they put into creating this sort of fake, but you can tell what it's supposed to be type of box art. Otherwise, the girls are in the positions they're in. One of them's holding an umbrella, the other one's going, hey, we're number one. And uh, they are injected molded, so they are not uh, resin in this case. And uh, you get both girls. And, you know, for a racing di Japanese racing diorama, this is probably a, a quite a nice addition. There, there was paddock girls from the 1980s. These are more modern paddock girls, so there's that. And then we go to Tamiya real quick. Now, this kit's been out for uh, two, three weeks here in the United States, but it's officially released in Japan, and that is the reissue of the Porsche 935 uh Martini liveried one twelfth scale kit. So I actually have one of these. Um, I think it's the two thousand and mid two thousand boxing because I do have photo etch in mine uh, that I bought in a print box of printer cartridges from the guy who's the plastic pusher at my local uh, model car club, and I paid fifteen dollars for it, which is substantially less than one of these things actually is worth or costs. As I believe this reissue is one hundred and thirty some odd dollars. Um, you know, this is effectively the Porsche 934 with a different body on it as far as all of the innards of this. Uh, you know, there's obviously a bunch of very specific 935 parts included here, but otherwise, uh, this kit is as old as I am. This was tooled up back in 1977, and um, it's a very cool... All of these, the 934s and the 935s, are very cool kits uh, in terms of, of what they are, especially considering how old they are. They're super detailed. They... My, I said the 2000s, I think the 2000s reissues, the first reissue that came with the PE in it. I don't think the original 1977 had PE, but it's got a bunch of wiring and a bunch of vinyl hoses, and you wire and plumb this whole thing, and the PE obviously adds a little bit to the to mesh and the, the brake faces and things like that, and it's very, very cool. The the, the clear pieces, like the, the, the fan shroud and things like that, are tooled in a weird sort of opaque, uh, like, vinyl material. It's, it's, it's a very, very intensive kit, especially when you consider how old this is. Um, this was Tamiya's, like, jam when they first started making model kits. We're making these big-scale uh, F1 cars, these big-scale uh, touring cars. This World Championship for makes it was basically the forerunner to uh, World Touring Car Championship, basically. Uh, group 5 racing and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, if you want one, it's available, and uh, chances are you didn't have one and you missed it the last time because really the importation of Tommy wasn't what it was, you know, 15 years ago. But anyway, that's back out there. And then we have three just quick reissues for the folks over at Aoshima. First up, you have the BN Sports Savannah RX-7, so a little tuner version of the Mazda RX-7 uh, FC3S. And then you have the Eurace, Hey, <laughs> make your own jokes there. Uh, 2001 Nissan Skyline R34. Now, this is the old tool R34 Mordor. This is basically the D1 Grand Prix kit, just without all the D1 Grand Prix decals. Uh, it's a gutted interior, uh, as far as like a racing interior, roll cage and all sheet metal floors and all that. And then it's got a, a different Eurace body kit than the Eurace version they did off the new tool last year. So, uh, actually, actually, it was the beginning of this year. So it's about last year, and then it was delayed until the spring. But at any rate, uh, this is the other version of that. So, like I said, it's an older kit at this point. And then you get a, a reissue of this, which is the Toyota Mark II uh, from 1992. And basically, this is just two trim levels are showing you on the box art here. Uh, it's a different set of wheels. One has a spoiler, and yeah, that's it. So there's just a uh, couple of different little options you can have. What they could call a catalog kit in the Japanese modeling industry, meaning it's just basically the specifications that you would get inside of an auto brochure. So that, guys, wraps up this week. Um, hope everybody had a good weekend. We are approaching the end of the year. Uh, full stop. Hopefully 2021 will be better. Won't be better right up front, obviously. We're going to continue slogging through this mess that we're in right now uh, well into the new year, but 
at least it's a new year and kind of look forward <laughs> hopefully to some things and uh, yeah try to try to remain positive and, and see what happens I guess anyway hope you enjoyed it see you guys on the other side